So please welcome Simon Anderson. Thank you. Good afternoon. Does anyone remember this? Back from February 2011? A lot of people remember this, it's awesome. IBM put their computer Watson up against the two all-time champions for Jeopardy. It was a three-day contest. And as you can see, this is the final question, the third day, Watson won. Now, the computer it took to do that was the size of a room back in February of 2011. It was just announced that the same computer now is a 16th of the size of the one that won the Jeopardy competition just two years ago. And IBM is actually saying that very soon it will fit in a briefcase. So the next question for me is, when, what's going to happen when all that computing power will fit in the size of a cell phone? So as a futurist, that's what I do. That's what I think about all day long and stuff like that. How many here know what a futurist is or have heard of a futurist before? Wow, okay. Usually like two hands go up. So whenever I tell somebody I'm a futurist, they usually look at me and go, you're a what? Well, <laughs> what I do as a futurist <laughs> is I research emerging technology and trends, and then I forecast how these trends are going to develop and converge, and then how they'll impact businesses and communities and organizations, so then I can partner with those businesses to help them understand what they need to do today to be successful in the future. So... It's really important, I feel my job is very important as a futurist because so often business leaders are so focused on their day-to-day -day metrics, their competition, you know, their employees, HR issues, that they don't really have time to take a step back and really think about what's going to happen in my industry in two years, what's going to happen in my industry in six months. So as a futurist, that's what I do. I can take a step back and really take a, a broader look and then partner with them. And as you can see, there are lots and lots of examples. These are just a couple of what happens when executives get too caught up in their day-to-day -day business and they're not thinking about what's going to happen in the future? Did you know Blockbuster, in the year 2000, had multiple opportunities to purchase Netflix for $50 million? $50 million. The market cap on Netflix as of close of business yesterday was $11 billion. And you all know where Blockbuster is right now. So, but as you can see, Forecasting the future can be very difficult. These people should have definitely known better. So <laughs> my favorite here is the iPhone's impact on our business will be minimal from the CEO of RIM in 2007. <laughs> How many iPhones in the room right now? How many Blackberries? If you're embarrassed, you don't have to raise your hand, but okay. <laughs> I think maybe he, he didn't see that one coming. And one of the reasons it's so difficult to, to forecast the future is that our minds naturally think linearly. So if we're thinking about what's going to happen in my business, in my industry, in a year, if we're even thinking about it, we're kind of projecting out this you know, gradual improvement. But technology for decades has been advancing exponentially. So you have things are doubling. The technologies are doubling and doubling and doubling. So the further out that we're thinking, the bigger the gap between what's reality and what we're expecting. And you see here in the knee of the curve, this is kind of where things are going more up than over on the curve. I actually think in my research I've found, I think we've hit that area right around November of 2011. If you've noticed, things are happening a lot faster now. In the beginning, it's pretty slow in exponential curves, but it starts to get very, very fast. Like, the rate of, the rate of increase is itself increasing. And so that's why I actually said on my, on my site that I think 2013, towards the end, is going to be the first year where it actually feels like it's starting to be the future. Like, we're actually starting to have these things that we've been talking about forever in, in uh, movies like Minority, Minority Report, like I was just talking with one of you about a few minutes ago. And one of the reasons things are going so quickly now is, as of the end of last year, 2.4 billion people were connected to the internet. 2.4 billion. So all this new information that we have is instantly accessible to all these people around the world. And it's widely projected that by the end of this decade, if it even takes long, there'll be 5 billion people um, connected to the internet. So if all these new ideas that are improved upon and shared, and mobile devices, just, it's just driving this technology and these changes so quickly. So if, that's why as a futurist, it's really my job to be a catalyst for discussion, to get people talking about this and just understanding that these changes are happening so quickly and you're going to in increase the change is going to happen faster and faster and faster. But it's kind of hard to think about these exponential trends and you know, billions of people on the Internet. So I'm going to give you a visual example that's a little bit easier just to, to understand here. 
Two months ago, there was a new pope that was elected, and they had his announcement in St. Peter's Square. And we also had a pope elected in 2006. So I'm going to show you the two pictures of St. Peter's Square from that announcement. This is eight years different. You notice any difference? Can anyone spot the futurist? <laughs> that arm right there belongs to a futurist. <laughs> so yeah, this is just eight years. Now think, what if there's another pope in eight years from now? Look at the difference from these two. What's it going to look like in eight years from now? Because there'll be a lot more change happening in the next eight years than has happened in the last eight years.